10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Dax Chats. In this episode, I'm getting to speak to someone who is in Sydney right now. He is uh, an Australian independent country artist. His debut single was called Cruising Along, um, and his second single was uh, Falling in Love in Galveston, which was uh, dedicated to his father because his father loved Glenn Campbell. So the track sounds a bit like a Glenn Campbell song. I'm talking about Ronnie Jordo and today Dax chats to Ronnie Jordo. Here he is. Get out, buddy. Hi, mate. All right. All right. So as I said, you've, you're living in Sydney, um, in the western, uh, southwestern suburbs of Sydney, uh, and uh, you're dealing with some pretty heavy crap right now i can say yeah, that <laughs> i guess mate yeah it's, it's a bit it's a bit crazy at the moment you know uh, a lot of restrictions and you know things that we're i guess we're trying to adapt to so yeah mm. it is mm. uh, it, it is what we call there's a couple of words that uh, have become synonymous with this pandemic uh one is of course the new normal um that we all talk about this is uh yeah. The way that we are going to be doing things for for a while yet. Um, so, let's go back and talk about your history. You've basically, how have you how have you come into country music? Um, okay, so basically, if I go right back to the beginning, it would have been in the late seventies. Uh, my uh, older brother Roger uh, used to play a lot of country music. Um, mm. You know, the Slim Dusty, the the um, you know. The, uh, Don Williams and, and these kind of guys and um, and I just grew up listening to that kind of stuff, uh, you know, through him and my other brother and and uh, when I went to visit them in Karatha uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, they were working there at the construction site there and, um, yeah, that's all I heard was country music and I just fell more and more in love with it and I heard Randy Travers and, and that was it for me, you know, so, mm -hmm. I it. so yeah, loved it ever since. So you've stuck along with that um, that more traditional country feel, you know. As as I just mentioned before uh, in the intro, you've you've you've, you've uh, sort of dedicated your second single to your father, and it has a, a has a sort of a, a Glenn Campbell feel to it. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> when I when I was writing uh, "Falling in Love in Galveston," um, like I said on a lot of the radio interviews, and then people have asked me, you know, how, how did you come across this song? And it basically, Dax said it's 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 uh, it came across to me um, when I was talking to a friend of mine, and it was telling me how hard it is to find, uh, you know, new love. I guess you know um, mm -hmm. you've got a couple of kids and all this kind of stuff. It's it's just hard to to, to you know for their kids to like your you and all this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, that's how the basic concept came out of falling in love in Galveston. And when I was writing the song, um, I remembered my brothers telling me about because my um, late father passed away. I was only three, so um, mm -hmm. I have no real memory of anything. So um, mm -hmm. they always used to tell me how he loved Glen Campbell, and 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 Galveston was one of his favorite songs. So I thought when I wrote the song, I'll, I'll you know basically I, I thought why not let him fall in love in Galveston? So you know mm -hmm. sort of bring back that memory of my father. So that, that's how I put it all together. And it's a beautiful song. I actually love it. And uh, you've done some uh, film clips with uh, Jay Sini and the, and oh, the film. Amazing. And the, amazing guy. Yeah, yeah and you know film. Jay for sure. I know Jay for sure. I've already done a Dex Pats with Jay. Um, yeah. He's he's a brilliant guy. Um, and he's, he's, he's done wonders for independent country artists in Australia, which is fantastic. Yeah, no, no, he's... he's um, Look, you know, uh, when, when I sent him over the song and I said to him, um, you know, what do you reckon we should come up with a concept of the song? Basically, the story was already there, but, you know, he puts those little extra things in, like, you know, they fall in love at the end and, and all this kind of stuff, which is, 
you know, for a young fellow like him, mate, it's amazing. You know, he, he did cruising along as well. So yeah, yes, he did. And I, I do, I do, I do like that the the uh, the concept of the the song falling in love with Galveston because it it talks about it doesn't talk about young love it talks about love from people that have been there before and have had commitment before and have had children and and, and it's like trying to find that special person with with baggage. <laughs> well. well. You know, you know whether it be the the male has it or whoever has the children. It, it's always a little bit hard. And and mm. uh, you know, when my friend was telling me about it, just telling me how how difficult it is. You know, and I, mm. I, I haven't been in that situation. So um, mm. you know, God forbid. So you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, when he was explaining it to me, I was like, wow, man, I never really, you know, sort of thought of things like that. And then you know, when he gave me that idea, I just, you know, that's how I I got the concept. Yeah, and I just thought I. I write a song about two people falling in love and, you know, and hopefully they, they do fall in love and JC may not fall in love at the end, so which is good. Yeah, that's right. Now, <clears throat> I also want to talk about your first single because your first single was was an absolute ripper. You know, cruising along was an absolute ripper. You came out, you, it came out with all guns firing with that song. Yeah. I, I think you know you did very well. It did it did well on charts. Um, yes. It did it did well with uh, with the, the music video. I think the music video was on CMC, which is no longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think you did very. <laughs> I think you did very well with the original, with the with the, with the debut single, um, and uh, and it and it's a great song, and it takes you it takes you back to a time which was, which was more simplistic, which you know when life was more simple. Yeah, it it, it did look. You know, uh, another thing with that with that song, like you said, you know, it, it took a lot of people, like like. You know, when I was writing that song, I, I pictured myself, you know, driving the old Dodge, the old Ford, the old, you know, cruising around the high. It, it's just kind of that old school country. And um, that's what I wanted to bring across. And, and Rod Mockby, um, amazing producer, um, you know, he did a great job with it. So, yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, I was actually overwhelmed by how many people, um, you know, loved that song. It, it was great. It was great. So, yeah. Oh, I, I, I still love it. Uh, I, I do. I still love it. I mean, they're like, it's still playing on my radio station. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I listen to your radio station when I get a chance. Yeah, I do hear it sometimes. So thanks a lot for that, mate. I, I really appreciate it. You know? No worries. No worries. So I, I guess, I guess in in these in these hard times, I need to ask, what have you done uh, to capture your audience? Mate, um, as you know, I did a Country Thunder uh, live performance, um, you know, on Facebook. I think we did it, um, you know, with a few other, uh, I think a couple of other radio stations as well and, and um, just doing a, a little bit of stuff on Instagram and, and just trying to keep that social media, you know, keep going, posting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, really, there's, there's not much we can do. I mean, um, I, I'm probably going to do another live performance on Facebook in the next couple of weeks, but... Um, yeah, just keeping the social media going and, and all that kind of stuff, man. That's all we can do at the moment. So, you know, I mean, Cameron um, from CS Management, I'm sure you know Cameron Surrett, um, you know, he's trying to he, – he can't do much either with the bookings and all that kind of stuff. So we just – you know, we can only just keep our social Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff, just keep it rolling, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean the, – the that's the new normal, isn't it? The uh, the new social media. That's the only thing we can work with. We can't do the gigs. We can't do you know the festivals. So the only thing we've got to rely on to keep our audience intact is the social media aspect of it. Mate, that's all we got. Yeah, that's it. That's you know um, trying to keep them up to date with, and even then, you know what's up to date. I mean, you know, I've been writing a few songs and things like that, but um, you can't sort of give them anywhere where you're going to play so they can come and see you or anything like that. So just posting up stuff, you know, just keeping them intact and, you know, sending out some, some messages of, you know, um, for everybody to stay safe and all that, you know. Um, you know, that's all you could do, Dax, as you know yourself, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I did a post this morning going back to my my 2019 single. I just put put uh, the lyric video up on on my yeah. on my personal page because I was like, I can't even write a song now. I can't get with a producer. I can't do anything like that. So, you yeah. know, 
and I, I, I get your point too. I mean, it's probably hard for you to get back into the studio with Rod and, you yeah. know, and, and, and do some more stuff. And yeah, it's a, it's a difficult world we live in right now. I, I, I just, it is. It's, it's, I've no. actually got my, my, my next single. It's, um, it's, it's ready to go, but we want to bring it out with a video and we can't do that at the moment. You know, uh, Jay's trying to organize and get everything happening, but with these restrictions, it's just, it's yeah. difficult, you know, and, so it, it has it is it has affected us in you know in, or everyone in, in in certain ways and for us I guess it's the videos of producing and all that kind of stuff trying to get it all on that roll you know mm-hmm. um, so we can get something out there for the fans to keep it you know mm-hmm. happening because um, like like you said before there's no festivals there's no nothing we can do so mm-hmm. you know I guess CMT and 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 all the radio stations and, and all that kind of stuff are just you know keeping it going for us I guess. We we are definitely trying. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's oh exactly that's, that's, right. ex, that's uh, exactly why I, I appreciate it a lot. So to all the radio stations, yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly why I set up the Country Thunder Network because I artists were struggling from from the outset, and I was in lockdown, and I saw it all unfold. You know, like so, I was just like well, what do I do? What can I do? The best thing I knew how to do was set up a radio station. So I was like, bang, up up it goes. In the middle of a pandemic, the Country Thunder Network appeared and um, here we are. Worldwide. Country Thunder now, mate. It's good. Yeah, you did a great job. You know, mate, you you, you play a great mix of of Australian and, you know, independent Australian artists and, and, you know, overseas artists. and, And I guess, you know, there's a lot of those community radios that are doing that for us and, and you know, and the commercial ones as well. So, yep, you know, yep. that's what people have got to look forward to at the moment, you know. Correct, correct. All Spotify playlists. <laughs> yeah, 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 Spotify playlists, you know, all that kind of stuff, yeah. For the younger, for the younger generation, we've got yeah, to leave exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for all the people. I'm an I'm an old timer. I believe in radio. I don't believe yeah, in spot spot yeah. Yeah. the great thing about the apps you can you can get all the radio stations now, so it's great, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as you, as you said, you've got a, a new single on the way, but uh, but you're you're waiting to uh, do this video clip for it before you before you roll it out. Can yes. you tell us? Can you tell us anything about the new single? Uh, yeah, I can tell you that it's um, it's produced by Rod Monty again. Um, <laughs> yeah, he does a great, fantastic job on it. Um, you know, he, he always pushes me to my limits. You know, he just he knows how to do it. And uh, you know, uh, I'm just looking forward to, to, to hearing you know uh, what the people out there you know think of this this new song. It's it's um, it's a little bit different. Um, in terms of, um, it's a it's a ballad song, so if that can give you a little bit more, and yeah, just uh, hang in there, and it'll be out soon. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So not not a lot of secrets there, but you know, okay, it, it is a ballad, and it was and it, and it was recorded by uh, produced by Rod. Rod. That's all I can say at the moment. You crack me up. Oh man! Um, so I guess what's happening with you? Do you do you do uh, a day job outside of music, or are you completely shut down? No, no. I, I also work in construction a little bit as well mm-hmm. uh, you know, to um, to to be able to afford to buy the stakes and the and you know. So yeah, so it's it's. I do have a day job uh, in construction at the moment. Um, obviously, we can't you know earn anything from you know. Um, mm. going out there and playing and all that kind of stuff, and and I love your post by the way the other day when you put up about how much royalty, uh, how much you get for, for streaming. Um, yeah, I saw that. The other day. that was, yeah, so um, just because you get thirty thousand streams doesn't mean you can make a lot of money. So yeah, I saw that. But well, yeah, I- well, I, well, I, I, I saw an interesting comment after the after the comment that I after the post that I put up about streaming because I want people to realise that, that that streaming is no good for artists because as I said, if you if your if your uh, one track is streamed ten million times in one year, you are still living under the poverty line with that, and yeah. then. 
And then Kaz Waters from Red Rebel Music also commented and said, but don't forget that this person takes their cut, this person takes their cut, yeah. this person takes their cut, this person. So it's like the, the artist doesn't get all that money that comes from, from streaming anyway because everybody takes a cut out of it. You know, your, your manager takes a cut, your booking agent takes a cut, your, your producer takes a cut, your songwriters take a cut. And so once you got once you got through all that, you might be getting a fraction of that. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I didn't like your post. <laughs> it was it, it, it showed the, the 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 true amount of dollars that that, that the artist gets. So yeah. Yeah, and and. And I and I, I I only put that up there because the uh, <clears throat> the CEO of Spotify was complaining that <clears throat> that uh, <clears throat> he said in a in a report a couple of days before I put that post up that uh, that uh, musicians should <clears throat> should work harder, create more, and stop complaining about what they receive from Spotify. And I was like, well, that's not on because you're ripping every artist in the world off including myself you know i've you know i've got songs on spotify you know so i don't get any money from spotify i think the last time i looked at my account there's 20 bucks in there i'm like yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, listen there kfc commercial shut up and take my money <laughs> <laughs> like like it, ta it takes me a year just to be able to go to mcdonald's with my family <laughs> uh... Yeah, but well, we don't do it for the money, mate. We do it for the enjoyment, for the you know, because we love we love country music. So yeah, I yeah, I, I, get, I, I get that. I get that point for you know for for some art, especially like myself, who's you know, it's it's basically a recreational thing for me because I you know don't go out and perform all the time, and I you know if I rec if I record a song, I might I might bring out a single once a year if I'm lucky, you know. Right. So for me, it is a hobby. It is a recreational thing. Um, but it still costs a fortune to produce this stuff. And it still costs, you know, once you, once you think about how much money you put into actually making that product so people can hear it, you know, and then it goes up onto Spotify and he takes all the profit from that. That is, that is where the problem is. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a full-time musician yeah. and uh, you know, so I don't, expect to yeah unless i was out gigging every i don't expect to make a lot of money from music but i but we spend a lot of money making the music but i, I guess dex if you if you want to look at it in a different way you say you know a lot of the um artists that independent artists that, that can sort of release their songs without having to have that record label or anything gives that kind of opportunity to get a bit of exposure i guess if if you know that's the right word to use, you know, in, in that sense of you know, with Spotify and all those kind of places, and at least they can get heard a little bit, or you know, and you never know what can happen from there. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, I mean, I remember when I was with a spender back in um, in, in the early 2000s, back then you had to get a record label, you had to get you know, before your song, unless you went and done it yourself, you know, with the old you know, CD burner and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yep. Uh, yep. With this Spotify and that, it sort of gives you a little bit of opportunity for others to hear you, you know. So, I oh. guess it works both ways, you know. I know you don't, we don't make it much money at all, but at least, you know, we're, we're, we're getting a bit of exposure. Yeah, I, look, I agree, I agree with that. That you know, yeah. the, 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 the streaming services have given us greater opportunity to get you know for independent artists to get their music heard across the world. It's it's fantastic. I I, I like that part of it. I just yeah. don't. I just don't like that the, the CEO who's made four billion dollars off off every artist in the world is turning around and telling artists that they should work more, create more, and stop complaining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a problem. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, what's next for you? Uh, how far are you looking ahead before before th you you, th you think that things can be back on the mend for you and you can start pushing on and and releasing more music and uh, bringing out more video clips and, and and entertaining us again? Yeah, well, I've got um, like I said, we're just waiting on I'm just waiting on uh, Jay to confirm for us um, a date so we can get in and do this this video uh, mm -hmm. for the next new uh, single. I've got uh, I've already written the next. Um, I've written some new songs as well to sort of follow through after that. So, um, again, like you said before, need to, you know, 
with these restrictions, it's making it a little bit harder to get that role on effect. Um, as you know, you know, you're going for the studio, you cut two, three songs, you know, and then you can, we can't do that at the moment. So going in there when we get that opportunity to go in. So, uh, I've already, like, luckily for me, I was able to get the, 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 the song, uh, produced and mastered and all that kind of stuff. So that's ready to go. Like I said, video coming soon, hopefully. Um, and then I've got, you know, uh, back in the studio, uh, next month with, um, Rod might be again to cut our next two songs. And uh, I'm looking at uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring out an EP. And um, and then I'm hoping by then we'll be able to go and play at Tamworth. <laughs> that's what we're hoping. So that's what Cameron and I have been talking about at the moment. Well, you know, that's what everybody's looking and at. You know, my heart when you told me maybe it's not going to happen. So... <laughs> It, that's 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 what everybody's talking about now. A lot of a lot of artists in Australia are, are, are sort of looking ahead towards that, you know, Tamworth twenty twenty one. But there are some artists out there that uh, are not even considering booking Tamworth because they don't think it's going to happen. They still think that that there's going to be a problem. You know, like as I as I just said to you off screen. You know, I would, I'm here in China and I've been here since, you know, it started and I was locked down on the 23rd of January. It's still, it's still here. It's the middle of summer. It's still here. So yeah. I just, I just think that creating a, a music festival where many, many people from many, many locations around Australia are, uh, and the world, because, you know, people from around the world come to Tamworth as well. Yeah. And they all, they all come into, come into the city and suddenly this, if one person has this this virus in that city at that time, it could just blow up, you know. So yeah. I, I I just don't know that it's a safe bet to say that Tamworth twenty twenty one is going to happen. But I'm I'm hopeful. I am. I'm yeah. hopeful. But I just I so I just wonder if it if it is, you know, like as I said to you, this VDM fest in in Biloela. It's like. He keeps saying it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And, and uh, with all the different restrictions that have happened and stuff like that, this is in October. We hope it, we hope it will happen, but we can't be sure. I mean, it might be two weeks bef before it's supposed to happen and he might have to shut it down because of something yeah. new that happened. So we just don't know. Nobody knows. I think, I think uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, we've got to be optimistic about, you know, what's going to happen. So... Uh, I, I know, you know, talking with Cameron, um, my manager, and, and just, just, you know, it, it's it's a bit hard to sort of foresee what the future is going to be. Correct. But we need to. You still need to make a bit of a plan. You know what I mean, Dax? You, you still got to have something, you know, and, and 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 take a couple of bookings in case they go. Oh yeah, we're ready to go. Let's do this. You know, and at least you can go. Oh, okay, great. Rather than have that panic of trying to get everybody to come, and you know, at least if you keep sort of. You know, yeah, maybe it's going to happen, but let's just keep it that we are going to have it happening. And then I guess if we need to cancel it, we cancel it. Mm. Um, we're going to go ahead, but at least we've already organised everything. So yeah. I think that, that's probably what they well, you know, I was saying to Cameron about, you know, yeah, you know, if there's... I think I, I think... I I think that's what Tam I think that's what Tamworth Regional City Council is doing right now. Is, is like they are they are working on. The, the festival going ahead they've already started putting signage up and they've already started you know yeah. the venues are starting to book people for yeah. you know so yeah. i think i think tamworth regional council is is working towards having it happen um but then come christmas time we'll see where we're at you know basically yeah. it's, basically it's christmas, a wait and see, really wait and see game. i mean i think it's a really good call because you don't like i said you don't want to leave to the last minute you know, where they, oh, yeah, you're right to do it now. And it's like, oh, hang on a sec, what have we got? You know, mm -hmm. make phone calls to get people in, you know. At least yeah. that way they've already booked and they're, they're keeping it as, as like you said earlier on, um, there'll be a lot of changes, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be the same. But mm -hmm. um, as long as they've, you know, got the bookings and everything right to go, that if it mm -hmm. still is allowed to continue, well, they've already organised it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a really smart move of, of them doing that. So, yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Bye. All right, Ronnie. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been thanks, great. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You take care. Stay safe. I will. And you too, buddy. You, you keep stay, stay at home. Wear a mask if you go outside, all right? Yeah, I will. For sure. All right, man. Have a good no one. Worry. You too, See man. You, take care. Yeah.
All right, that was Ronnie Giordo, and his uh, debut single was called Cruising Along, and his brand new single is called Falling in Love in Galveston. Both of those songs are available on the Country Thunder Network. You can request them on our player, or you can vote for them in the Country Thunder 20 on our website, which is right there, countrythunder.com.au. Until next time, this is DJ Dax for Dax Chats signing out. We are proudly supported by Neon Horse in Stanhope, Victoria. Bye for now.